So Allie, our goal was to find the hidden roads of America. What do you think? Oh, I think that so far we've succeeded. <laughs> we are out here. Yeah, I am loving all the gravel and just long stretches of empty highway. It's really special out here. Another really cool thing about these roads is, you know, we look at our maps so we never know what's gonna be gravel, what's gonna be asphalt, and it's exciting. You get out there and it's a surprise. How's it feeling, Allie? It fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> My legs are so just expired from yesterday. Now, this is just my bones working. It kind of feels good too. Let's see in a meditation space. You can get there. Lone Rock Jail, huh? We do need to find water. Usually there's some sort of water behind the church. Hi there. Doing great. Is there a hose nearby we can fill up some water bottles? Thanks for helping out. This is good water here. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we come from Astoria. We're on our way to New York. Really? Hold on. Yeah. A monument. You can't get through this way. We can't? Uh oh. We're rolling through town. We're making great time today. We stop up at this guy's house. He lets us fill up our water bottles and we're like, yeah, we're gonna go to Monument. And he's like, you can't go that way to Monument. And we're like, yeah, the Google map says you can. And he's like, nope, the road is closed. I would never take my ATV up there. I wouldn't do it. He's like, you could, but I wouldn't do it. He's like, you gotta go all the way up that big ass hill. <laughs> oh boy. These are the perils of uh, not having a, a route planned. Every day we're planning our route and sometimes Google Maps just throws you the wrong way. So we're gonna eat lunch, cry a little bit, and figure things out. Yeah, this is a tough one. My deep inner self wants to just keep on going down this really rough road that the guy's like, oh, you guys will never make it. I have a hard time turning around. Going back has never been one of my strong suits. But in the spirit of this adventure where we said that we were gonna let other people direct our trail, direct our path, um, I feel like listening to our friend Paul going back and taking this other route makes a certain amount of sense. What's our decision? We're going back. Going back. Back up the hill. Oh. We might be lost, but at least we're lost together. <laughs> Nobody I'd rather be lost with. My friend Dana says you're never lost. You're just where you are. We're on planet Earth, here we are. We know where we are. <laughs> We're just not where we want to be, I should say. Slowly up the road. Yeah, this hill is a big hill. Going down it was really nice. Going up it is not quite as enjoyable. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, boom. Almost there, almost there. So here is the turn off. Yeah, we're essentially like seven miles from where we started the day. This is a serious backtrack. <laughs> it's just one of those days where we're just kind of spinning in circles and luckily it's really beautiful and the clouds are puffy and pretty. And not surprisingly, this is called Lost Canyon Drive. It seems very appropriate because we're lost. I think I have a map. Yeah, we, well, we have our phones and we're playing around with the Google Maps and stuff, and it's kind of like you know what you 
if it's your phone's anything like mine, you just will run over it. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're not gonna you're not gonna get to spray tonight. <laughs> I guarantee your fanny that because it's fifth. What is spray? It's fifty miles to. You probably don't see many cyclists getting lost on this road. I don't. It's kind of exciting <laughs> yeah. to see a couple of young people just doing doing their own thing. That's kind of neat. You know? Yeah, it is. We're on this road here. Spray's crew over here. So this is high elevation. This is hilly. Yeah. Yeah, this that's windlock, and I don't. Even, this oh, yeah. road is all locked up. That used to be the 21 road. Uh, you know, uh, you can't get through that area. You can't okay. get through that area. Uh -uh. I'll tell you what. I'm going to be Mr. Nice Guy, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't have anything else to do. I'm retired. Every day's a Saturday. <laughs> Every day's a Saturday. <laughs> right up on top here. Yeah. Right up there is is. 4,200 feet elevation. Wow. Okay. Wow. And I'm going to take your, I'm going to take you guys right up on top of that hill. Up there. <laughs> okay. Okay. All and right. then, then you can go down to Service Creek. So it's a goddamn fast and make your head spin. All right. All right. And then Service Creek would be a great place to have a food there. Okay. And they have, and it's on the John Day River. It's a great oh. place to camp. Wow. Okay. And you can ride that son of a bitch down there as so a fast and make your head spin. That sounds fun. Yeah, What's your name? Does. Dan Shaw. Dan, I'm Ryan. Dan. Ryan nice to, to meet, meet you, you, my friend. Allie. Allie, Allie. glad to meet you. Allie. <laughs> We're, on, we're a brand new couple. We met like three months ago. We met, fell madly in love. Oh, cool. And we thought it would be cool to go across the country and ask people for love advice. Do you have any advice, Dan Shaw? <laughs> you know what? Behind every successful farmer is a wife with a good job in town. That's what you have to remember. <laughs> and you're still together? Yeah. How long have you been married? We were 43 years last Saturday. Wow, congratulations. I mean, 45. 45 yeah. last Saturday. 45 years. What's, what's the key to longevity? Because we want to continue this relationship. <laughs> well, just be nice. That's all you have to do. Just be nice to one another. That's yeah. I like it. It's kind of the golden it's rule. simple. Yep. Don't cheat on anyone. That's the worst thing there is. That's, you know, the only thing. If you start cheating on someone, you're cheating on yourself. That's, that's what these kids don't realize anymore. Yeah. You know, everything looks, the old saying is grass is greener on the other side of the fence, but it's not. Yeah. It's no. not. If you no. live long enough, you know damn good well. Yeah. Things are the same on this side as they're on that side of the fence. They just look different. Thank you so much. You're very Can't welcome. Thank you enough. There goes the hero of the day. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that guy, we were both on the road and... I was like, I don't know if this is the right way. We keep, uh. And then he shows up. He pretty much was like, nope, put your bikes in my truck. I'm going to take you to the top of the hill. Your head's going to spin so fast. When you go down that hill, you're going to love me forever. <laughs> How could we say no? <laughs> yeah, I was like, usually I don't let people like boost me. I want to like do these trips all the way human powered. But that was a fun experience. He was a great guy. I think that probably we had to get lost so many times today so that we could get hang out with Dan for half an hour in his truck. He had <laughs> a great stories, great history about this area. Yeah, he's from this area. His great great grandparents settled it. He's a logger. Yeah. He's a, he's a rancher and his his love advice was very simple. Just be nice. <laughs> Mwah. All right. We're at the top of a mountain now and what he just boosted us would have taken us forever. Our estimation for how far we needed to go was way off. Like, we would have, we would, yeah. It's amazing how quickly a day can go from, we're totally lost, we're totally screwed, we're gonna run out of water and food, to I'm sitting at a restaurant eating a banana fudge sundae. Ha! <laughs> Life is good. Life is so good. And look, a tater tot. We found an awesome campsite right next to the John Day River. We have our own little private spot right here with some tree coverage and most importantly access to the river to wash off our stanky bodies. Whoa! <laughs> beautiful river. Thank you for a beautiful place to sleep. And the beautiful stars. All right, Allie, we've been on the road for one week. 
Dun dun! <laughs> ready to ride bikes? I am so ready. I feel like I belong on the road. That's right. You're becoming a bike tourer. That's correct. <laughs> How's this your butt? This is my home. This is where I live. My butt feels great. Your butt's good? Yeah, how do you think it feels? It feels pretty hard. Getting harder. Yeah. Boom, boom! On the road again. You know, when you're riding a bike, you can enjoy all the sounds, like sprinklers. It might seem like nothing, but it's kind of a soothing sound. Slowly making our way on this beautiful byway. This is one of the least trafficked byways I've ever been on in my life, so I appreciate that, Oregon. Good work. <laughs> Seriously, there's been like 10 cars all day and they go way around you. Woo, you see that thing? Yeah, I sure did. We got married. We eloped and ran off to the beach. <laughs> we did. And didn't tell anybody. So we're riding across the country trying to get uh, hope and inspiration for people about love because we want to fall further in love. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? I think the biggest word there is honesty. 100%. You have to be honest. Yeah. And you have to listen to what the other person is telling you because if they're taking the time to be honest, you have to take the time to be open and really listen to what they're saying. Yeah. You know, it's important. I just don't think you can love somebody without being honest. You just have to be open and listen and able to actually receive what they're saying because they are taking the time to be honest about it and you need to look at it from their point of view and not your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't be yep. selfish. Yep, that's one thing. A lot of a lot of it is selfishness because you're looking at how it affects you personally and not how it's affecting them and what they're going through. So how did you know she was the one? How did you know he was the one? Different. It, the whole relationship, like you know, like he had said, I had I've been married three times. My last marriage was 10, 11 years. We were actually going on our twelfth year, and it was just. The, my relationship with him and the connection that him and I had was completely different than any other relationship I'd ever been in. Um, kind of like we've known each other for a long time, even though that wasn't the case. So there was something about her, actually. Like I said, I yeah, been after her for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Ah, oh, you guys are perfect. Thank you.